taji imani kubwa. You don't need more faith. Hawi taji imani nyingine. You already have faith. Bado uko na imani. You have faith when you believe in Jesus. Uko na imani unapomwamini Yesu. All you need to do is use your faith. Jenye unastahili ni kutumia imani yako. By practicing to live by faith. Wa kufanya mazoezi kuishi katika imani. When you don't you use your faith, wakati hautumii imani yako, you will not grow in faith. Hautakuwa kwa imani. Another way you can grow in faith is what we said here, praying in the Holy Ghost. Jenye itakufanya ukue katika imani ni kuomba katika Roho Mtakatifu vile vile imesema. The Holy Spirit leads you into prayer. Roho Mtakatifu anakuongoza katika maombi. In intercessions katika kuzidi kwa maombi. In Ephesians 6:18 we read it earlier on. Tuliposoma pale Waefeso 6:18 tulisoma hapa. Yes. Somebody read it again. Watu watasomea tena. Chapter 6 verse 18 Paul said there Mlango wa 6:18 Paulo alisema pale How to pray? Jinsi ya kuomba. Now, you pray. Sasa unaomba in the spirit. Kwa roho. For all the saints. Kwa watakatifu wote. Now you don't know everybody. Haujui kila mtu. You cannot pray in Swahili or in a Kigusi language for everybody. Hautaweza kuombea kwa kila mtu kwa lugha ya Kiswahili ama Kisii. Because if you want to pray for everybody in this community, you will never be pray, finished praying from morning to evening. Because you don't know how to pray for them. But the Holy Spirit knows. How does the Holy Spirit know? The Holy Spirit knows all the demonic activities going on in this place. Roho Mtakatifu anajua mapepo zote zinazoendelea kufanya kazi katika area hii. He knows the spirit that is holding people bound and all those problems. Anajua chenye kinafunga watu na mashida katika hii area. And in most cases it could just be one spirit. Na unaweza kuta kweli mara nyingi ni 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 roho moja. Those one thing that the Holy Spirit is going to reveal to you. Ni roho moja ambaye Roho Mtakatifu atakufungulia as you pray in the spirit. Wakati unaomba katika roho. And all you just need to do is talk to that spirit. Yaani unafaa tu kufanya ni kunena na huyo roho and command it in the name of Jesus. Na umuamuru kwa jina la Yesu. Then you pray for everybody. Bidi tena ukamwombea kila mtu. Because when you get the problem out of the way, kwa maana ukizapata shida njiani, people will see the light. Watu wataona mwangaza. They will find the solution to their problem. Watu watapata usuluhisho katika shida zao. You see what that's what it is why it's important to be led by the Holy Spirit. Hiyo ndiyo maana ya kuongozwa na Roho Mtakatifu. And that's what praying in tongues helps us to do as Christians. Na kama kuomba kwa kwa mbinguni kama wakristo pia. It helps us to be very effective partners with God. Inatufanya tuwe wa karibu sana na Mungu. In this world, katika hii ulimwengu. In Mark chapter 16 before Jesus went into heaven, Mariko 16 kabla Yesu hajaenda mbinguni, from verses 8:15 6, to 18, he said these words. 18 hadi 18 inasema, Those that believe in my name, wale wanaoamini kwa jina langu. These signs and wonders shall follow those that believe in my name. Miujiza hii itaandamana pamoja na wao kwa jina la Ikasema kwamba watawekea mikono kwa wagonjwa they shall recover na tena watapata upendo they shall drink any deadly poison watakunywa hata vitu vimewekwa sumu and it shall not hurt them na havitaweza kuwadhuru it's not saying you should go and look for poison to drink haitawaambia kwamba atemwenda mtafute sumu mkunywa what is saying there is that wishes we give you something very Hard that we kill you, or very bad people will give you something bad that you don't know anything about. Ni ile kwamba ati watu wabaya watawapea vitu ambavyo yamevuyelewa. But it will not harm you. Lakini avita wamariza. 
and they will be surprised that it did not harm you. They will be shocked that, man, we gave this thing, it worked for everybody, it's not working for him. Because the Holy Spirit is working on you. What they are doing for other people will not harm you. That's what Jesus is talking about there. So don't go looking for poison to drink. <laughs> Amen? Amen. Amen. So he said also that they shall speak in other tongues. That's Jesus who said that. So it's very, very important for our growth. As Christians, kama wa Kristo, to be filled in the Holy Ghost. Ujazwa katika Roho Mtakatifu. Well, I think I have as we have some time to talk about this. Nafikiria niko na muda bado kuzungumzia hai. Why is it important for us to speak in tongues? Ni kwa nini sana ya muhimu tuzungumze katika ndimi? It is also important for us as Christians to know that we cannot be a Christian if we are not a disciple of Jesus Christ. You cannot call yourself a Christian if you are not a follower of Jesus. There are so many people outside there who say they are Christians. But they don't, they don't follow Jesus. They don't follow the Bible. They live by tradition and culture. Some of them say they are Christians because they were born into a Christian home. Wangina wanasema ni wa Kristo maana walizaliwa katika zile boma za wa Kristo. That is crazy, stupid. Hiyo ni upumbavu wazimu. Jesus said you must be born again. Yes, well, he said, Not because you are born into your Christian home. <laughs> Being born into your family, your father and mother gave birth to you, makes you to become by blood, you know, children to that to that to your parents. Kuzaliwa kwa familia kuna kufanya uwe mtoto katika wazazi wako. But to be a child of God, you must be born of the Spirit. Lakini kuwa mtoto wa Kristo lazima uwe na Roho Mtakatifu. It's two different things. Ni vitu mbili tofauti. The Spirit of God must touch you. Roho wa Bwana lazima akuguze to understand the things of God. Kuelewa mambo ya Mungu. And we read earlier on in Deuteronomy 29:29 29, 29, the hidden things of God are not hidden from you. God is keeping them safe for you. To discover them. Your God is a God that loves to play hide and seek with you. I don't see. He something and he had a bit of 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 a and then I will go hide in another place. That's how God does with you also. He likes to play with you. He likes to have some fun with you. He loves it. He enjoys it. When you seek him, how do you seek God? Wakati unamutafuta, ndivyo anataka. You seek him here in the Bible. Unamutafuta kwa Bibiria. Amen. That's how you find him. You seek him and you will find him. Ndivyo unamutafuta, unamutafuta tena unamupati. And God loves it. Na mungu wanapenda. Paul said in Acts of Apostles 16, no. Acts of Apostles 17 and verse 27. Paula alisema katika wa matenda ya mitume kumi na saba, chiri na saba. That God is not far away from us. Ya kwamba mungu wetu ayuko mbali sana kwa Jesus. He said in him we live. Kwamba kwake ya ya tuwaishi. And in him we have our breath. Kwamba kwake tena tuwapata mkate wetu. The life of God is on your inside. 
the life of God is on your inside. Maisha ya 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 Mungu yako ndani yako. Now the Bible says that we should speak in tongues. Now I've got some points that I want to go through quickly. I hope I will have the time to go through all of this. I wrote it down not long ago because the Spirit of God was leading me to write it. I didn't know I'm going God was leading me to write it for this meeting tonight. Listen to this. In 1 Corinthians 14, 39, the Bible tells us there why it's important for us to speak in a tongue. Mm-hmm. Of tongues. You can speak in one tongue, one language. Or speak in many other languages. But speaking in one tongue is different from speaking in many tongues. When somebody speaks in one tongue, sometimes the interpretation, the gift of an interpretation of that what you say comes to other people too. Kwa hivyo kwa ile ile anazungumza inakujia kwa watu wale pia wakifunuliwa. In my holy life as a Christian. Maisha yangu ya mwanzo kama mkristo. In the church where I got born again. Kwa kanisa ambayo nilipata kuzaliwa upya. I used to be an usher in the church. Nilikuwa mkaribishaji katika kanisa. I one day all the Christians were praying in tongues. Na wakati moja wa Kristo wote walikuwa naomba kwa nini? And they were in the spirit. Na walikuwa naomba kwa roho. I speak Russian language. Yeye yeah, alikuwa yeah, anazungumza lugha ya Kirashia. And I speak some other foreign European languages. Pia naongea katika ndimi zile za wa Europe. And I do understand other languages too. Na anazielewa hizo lugha pia tena zote. Right beside me as I was standing right there. Bila alikuwa ameshimama kando yake pale. There was a man who was present in Russia. Kunae mwanaume mmoja alikuwa anamtukuza Mungu katika lugha ya Kirashia. I know because I speak Russian. Ninajua kwa sababu nazungumza Kirashia. When the service was over, I went to him wanted to speak Russian to him. Wakati ibada ilisha nikaenda karibu naye nimzungumzie Kirashia. He told me, "No, I don't speak Russian." Akaniambia mimi unaniambia nini sielewi hiyo lugha. I looked at him I said I just heard you praising God in Nika, Russian language. Nikamuuliza nilikusikia ukitukuza Mungu kwa lugha ya Kirashia. He would never study in Russian language. Hakuongea kwa lugha ya Kirashia. But he was praising God in Russian. Kumbe alikuwa anamtukuza Mungu kwa Kirashia. Isn't that amazing? Hiyo sio ni kitu ya kushangaza. Is the gift. Hiyo ni kipawa. Walking in the church. Kinafanya kazi kwa kanisa. There was a time also I was in Russia. Kuna wakati pia nilikuwa katika Russia. In a Russian church, katika kanisa ya Kirashia, everybody were worshiping God in the spirit. Kila mmoja alikuwa anamwabudu Mungu katika roho. And I had a white Russian man, a man in Russia. Nikamsikia mwanaume mmoja wa Kirashia who had never been to Africa ambaye hajakuwa kwa Afrika hii yetu. He was worshiping God in my local language. Alikuwa anamwabudu Mungu kwa lugha ya huyu mtumishi. And that was a sign to me. Hiyo ndiyo ilikuwa alama kwake to know that God is in that place. Kujua ya kwamba Mungu katika alikuwa katika mahali hapo. Because I went back to that man, I tried to speak to him in that language. Maana nilimrudia yule mwanaume nikataka kumzungumzia na yeye lugha yake wetu. He looks at me, are you okay? Seeking your hand, I don't speak that language. Wao kama mgonjwa mimi sizungumzi kwa hiyo. It was a gift of God to him. Kumbe ilikuwa ni kipawa kutoka kwa Mungu kwake. The gift of speaking in tongues kipawa ya kuzungumza kwa ndimi is very very important ni cha muhimu sana kwa kanisa because most often an unbeliever who doesn't believe in God wengi sana ambao hawamwamini ama hawanaamwamini Mungu we come to the church watakuja kwa kanisa 
and God will speak to that person in a language that he understand better. Na Mungu atazungumzia huyo mtu kwa lugha ambayo anaielewa zaidi. Now the pastor is preaching about. Hiyo ndio pastor anazungumzia. And the gift of God that flows that way. Na vipawa vya Mungu vinaenda namna hii. Don't ever limit the gift of the Holy Spirit. Usiweke mipawa kwa vipawa vya Mungu. Don't say it's going to work only through the pastor. Usiseme kwamba Mungu atatembea kwa wachungaji. You are not the ultimate only person to whom God can work. Sio kwamba wewe ni peke yake Mungu anaweza kuzungumza na wewe. God could work through the leaders of the church. Mungu anaweza tembea kufanya kazi na na viongozi wa kanisa. He could speak through the deacon of the church. Anaweza kuzungumza na madikoni katika kanisa. Who is filled in the Holy Spirit? Ambao wamejawa na Roho Mtakatifu. Yaani ni kama ni kama kitu ambacho chuma ambayo imenolewa. But your job as the pastor is to judge every prophecy. Kwa hivyo kazi yako kama mchungaji ni kuangalia kila unafikiri. Your job is to be there and judge what is of God and what is not of God. Kazi yako ni kuangalia ni vigani vyatoka kwa Mungu na ni vipi havitoki kwa Mungu. You will know. Hautajua. And if it's not of God, kama vitu havitoki kwa Mungu, it is your job at that time as the pastor to pick up the microphone. Ni kazi yako kama mchungaji kuchukua ile ile kipaza sauti because there are people who do prophesy in the flesh. Kwa hivyo kama kuna watu wengine ukweli wanazungumza ama wanatoa unabii katika mwili. You can pick up the microphone and prophesy that you man is supposed to speak the wife of that person is nonsense. Unafaa uchukue microphone na useme huyo mwanamke huyo ana anafaa kuwe mwanamke wa huyo mungu wa, wa, wa bibi wa huyo mwingine. Ni bure kabisa. Because God will never force his will on people. Kwa maana kwa sababu Mungu hawezi akalazimisha mapenzi yake kwa watu. That's a wrong prophet. Hiyo ni unabii ambayo ni tofauti ya Most of the times when the gift of prophecy works at the church, wakati mwingi wakati unabii unafanyika katika kanisa. If the God has a word of prophecy for somebody, ikiwa ni wakati